Howdy folks, this is Jagos, and we're going to be talking about the Orlando shooting one more time. And the topic of this, the title of this, is going to be the FBI narrative is slowly falling apart. Now the reason for this is not necessarily because I have some kind of love-hate relationship with the FBI, but as I've begun to look into this story, the things that have been talked about are not making sense. And when you're looking into the FBI, their narrative has basically not only changed, but it's to deny the actual truth and reality of the people in Orlando and make it so that it's about one thing instead of their own failures. Now, I don't want to sit here and go too much on what I've uncovered recently with, in regards to the G4S, his employer having worse human rights abuses. I've already made a video on that. But let me sit here and go through everything about the FBI narrative that is sitting here and telling us that the reality is far different from what is actually on the ground. When we started this thing, on the day while the bodies were still getting cold, the FBI told us this was nothing more than ISIS and everything else. Well, they've had to backtrack on that because there's been a lot of popular resistance to this idea. I know some people don't like the fact that, uh, I mean, I'm indifferent on most religions, even SJWism as well as Catholicism, but I'm not seeing a lot of religious to undertones to this type of ordeal. If ISIS is trying to kill people because they're gay, they've already done that in the countries and the people that they've attacked mostly has been Muslims in the Middle East. That is their main target. It's either you're going to be a part of their caliphate or you're not. That's one or the other. It's an absolutism and it's a type of right-wing fundamentalism that we see here in America in regards to, say, the Westboro Baptist Church who hates fags and hates gays and basically they just keep protesting and continue on with this xenophobia and outright bigotry over anything else so isis has a lot in common with the right wing and probably i'd say more to do with right wing fundamentalism than anything else but let's go ahead let's look at the fbi narrative and you know from this distraction it's supposed to be about ISIS. Well, he was a Muslim, that's true, but his dad was a homophobe, and from everything that has been told by multiple people, and I don't I, I don't see the, a reason for them to lie about this, but Omar Mateen was gay himself, while he did have a wife that he domestically abused, it's also the fact that even with his second wife, he, it looked like he had gay lovers. So, what are we supposed to get from that? If he is gay and shot people because they're gay, what about him himself? Now, the next thing that a lot of people are sitting here talking about is the fact that one of his lovers, I mean, alleged lovers now, because I, I don't understand why people are, you know, trying to get away from this, but you ask why would he bring this up okay one of the people that he had sex with was an hiv positive man that's why would he make this up so this whole shooting changes from being about terrorism to being about sexuality and omar was not comfortable with his own and he was you know a crazy angry troubled man and he got a gun so if he got a gun, he was able to kill 50 people, we have to sit here and start asking questions about those 50 people. Did they truly get shot by Omar Mateen? Along with that, we have to ask if he's gay and he did this for revenge, what would push him over the edge? Well, let's get into the gun issue first. The AR-15. Okay, he got one. He held it, he's used it, he's fired it, but a lot of reports are saying that if you look at the autopsies, the fact of the matter is, Omar Mateen might not have shot as many people as the police. And we won't know that 
unless you look and autopsy each of the bodies and see what type of ammunition was used. So the militarized SWAT team that went after Omar Mateen might have done far more damage than Omar Mateen himself. Now, I'm sitting here saying this because 50 people dying by one person's hand, okay, that's, that's still horrific. But it's not the most, the biggest genocide in history that the United States government has done. Number two, it begs the question of, is this a militarized SWAT team really all that good at solving problems of guns and all these other things? And if it's the police that have a high body count, we have to start asking, are their methods and tactics really at really effective in sitting here and preventing something like this? We don't know. But the fact of the matter is, this guy might have just sat here giving them a call, sat here and said, there's a whole bunch of people that I'm affiliated with, even though these people hate each other, which is exactly what he did, just to get more attention and more media coverage on the fact that he was shooting up this place. So, we have that whole issue with the guns. This is something that nobody wants to get into because it's like a militarized police force is not effective at handling the issue of a either a a hostage situation or be a crazy shoot mass shooter and we've had plenty of mass shootings to sit here and say this is not something that is effectively working to prevent these types of thing ordeals so let's go back we're looking at the FBI narrative yet again we see that the gun narrative it may be that the police had a lot more handle into it now, what's the other thing that's going to be hidden? Well, if he's gay, if the gun issue is more that the police are a problem, the other issue is how much more power can they get by holding on to this very very crazy narrative? Well, the facts show that Omar Mateen might have visited this place before. He might have cased the joint. If he cased the joint, why is he on dating apps and all this other stuff? There's so many different questions that are starting to pop up that people aren't doing follow-ups about. It really begs the question of what in the world is going on. And the FBI looks like it wants to cover it up for their own narrative. Like, they took the dating app, I mean, they took the cell phones of certain people. And on top of taking this, the, the phones, they told people not to talk to reporters to report the story because it undermines the official FBI narrative and investigation. Now, this has historical precedence, especially with the Watergate scandals, because if you look at the um, Watergate reports by the FBI, I forget what it's called, but effectively those are used to undermine the actual things that are being said, either by a Mark Felt or what is going on or why the FBI was so bad at the JFK assassination event or even why they didn't sit here and look into the CIA at the time those types of ordeals and things so there's plenty of things that go on that the FBI is looking to undermine by holding on to this narrative and this narrative is not going to help them except to sit here and try to get them more money which is why they're holding on to these ideas that he's an Islamic terrorist even though he was born in New York, you know, no band of Muslims would have sat here and stopped him from going to the place that he needed to go to or getting a gun or anything like that. But you have that whole thing of him being a Muslim. He might be a reclusive Muslim or whatever else. Then on top of that, his, employ his employment, if you ever look at GS4, is all about prisons and things like that. So... The FBI is basically telling us a false story so that way they can get a lot more money out of this uh, ordeal off of someone else's tragedy and misery. And if the police actually killed more people than was a, you know, was bearable in trying to shoot the man or if let's just say the police were racist or sexist in any way and decided they wanted to discriminate against gay people and shoot them under the pretense they could sit here and put it to Omar Mateen. You might have some murderous cops out there and it's not like Orlando doesn't have a history of that. 
These are all questions that should be asked, especially about how this community is not only grieving, but also how they're going to be pro uh, looked into in the future and how they prevent something like this from happening again. So we have a gun issue, we have a sexual, sexual identity issue that's going on, and nobody can sit here and say that we don't have a sexual identity issue because before this, a whole bunch of people were fighting about gay people using the restroom. I don't care if they're LG, I don't care if they're LGBT, LMNOP, what the fuck, barbecue, or whatever. The fact of the matter is, we have discrimination, we've allowed hatred, and those are the moral values that a lot of people are sitting here and looking into. And the FBI, by covering this up, is continually on with these types of discriminations instead of actually helping the problem by investigating properly and fairly, which doesn't seem to be in their narrative.